Right next to me, I have the Kia Sportage plug-in hybrid. And this has just won another award, 2024 best midsize SUV. Selling over 100,000 units last year. People love this car and the Kia Sportage is their best selling model globally. The whole world love this car, the way it looks, the way it drives, it's doing really well. And you might be someone that's not quite ready to go full EV yet. Well, the plug-in hybrid could be great for you because it's a bit of everything. I've had this car over a week, I'm still loving it, and I have tested out everything and I want to share with you what I found out. Also, I've got a couple of secrets that I think will be really helpful and handy for you guys. And I haven't seen anyone else talk about these, so I think you're going to like those. So in today's episode, I'm going to do a little bit of a range test so you can understand real hand how many miles of range you're going to get with the electrification side of this vehicle. And also I'm going to talk about the car and what it's like to drive on the UK roads. Let's go. Let's talk about range then with the Kia Sportage plug-in hybrid because I've got some numbers on my screen now. I've got a 50% battery. Actually, if I click this, it will tell you exactly what we've got. 51%, all right, there we go. 51% battery, 16 miles of EV range. And I wanna see what, what that is really. I wanna see how quickly that's gonna go. And we can put it into EV straight away and just set a distance of 16 miles, see if it does that. But I am, I am interested because Kia have stated on all of their literature that this car can get 43 miles of range on the WLTP uh, testing procedure and then 252 miles combined. Well, that, that is interesting because if I press this button, this shows me on eco driving, eco driving, sorry, what people have been getting on the history. And you can see here, it's all in like the 30s MPG. So you've got 33 MPG. Someone drove it on the 22nd for 88 miles, miles me, uh, 37 MPG. So that's a lot lower than the self charge hybrid. Let's do some stats then with the plug-in hybrid. We've got 261 brake horsepower, 350 newton meters of torque. Now the 0 to 62, on some of the literature it says 8.4 seconds, but then I've seen elsewhere it says 7.9 seconds, which I think is quick enough anyway, but we, who's gonna do a launch in an SUV, right? In a mid-size SUV family? <laughs> well, we might do one later, just to see what it feels like. Then you've got 252 miles per gallon, which I think I mentioned earlier combined which is just not true we spoke i'll sh talk i'll show you the boot space and we'll talk about uh, practicality a little bit later and it this one the plug-in hybrid has three trim levels starts with the gt line which this is then we have a three model and then we have a gt line s now in my personal opinion the GT Line is a great trim level to go for. Yeah, you don't have a sunroof, you don't have a power tailgate, you don't even have a decent 12.3 inch digital cluster. You get that on the three trim, which is a thousand pound more. So this one starts at 40,575 pounds. A thousand pound more, you, play, you pay for the three trim, and then over 5,000 pounds, you get the GT Line S with remote parking. But we haven't needed that feature for years. We don't need it now. So you can save yourself a ton of money going in for the GT line, you get cool seats, you get heated seats, heated steering wheel even, you get a camera, it's not a 360, that's on the top trim level. Front sensors, back sensors, listen, you need to go for the GT line if you're thinking about getting a trim model, it's the best affordable one, you save a ton of money, it'll be better on leasing deals as well. Let me know what model you think is the best and if you agree with me down in the comments. Okay, let's do a little bit of an exterior walk around and talk about some of the external features. I think. This new Sportage, if you compare it to the old Sportage, <laughs> oh, this is so much nicer, isn't it? So much more, uh, better, more aesthetically pleasing to look at. So much effort. Look at these big angular boomerang headlights. The grille's cool as well, very aggressive. And I also like the bumper. And I think on these GT line plug-in hybrids, you've got the metal skid pay at the front and the back. It has got a bit of chrome here, which I think ruins it a little bit. It's a little bit too busy. Again, this is the blue flame color, 650 pound option. I was hoping we'd probably get it in a different color. I, blue and black to me is just not a mix I like, depending on the blue. So we've got the, you know, the cladding down here, the piano black gloss, black roof rails. Then you've got the 19 inch. I do like this style. They kind of look, it kind of looks like a chopping blade. Don't know what it is, but 
makes me think that it just looks like I could chop something up with that. So 19 inches, this is the way you want tires now in the UK with all of our horrible potholes. Big, thick tire walls. Come around the back, you've got the, the big Kia logo there. A lot of people think it's KN. I could see why they think it might be KN, and there was big talk about everyone searching on the internet going, trying to find the new KN car, but it is Kia. A little bit of chrome on the spoiler there, and then you do have tucked away your rear windscreen wiper, which kind of gets some of the window, not much of it, like a third of the window, but mainly in the middle, cleans it. The, the back's a weird one, you know, because the back, I look at it sometimes and I think, nah, I don't, that's not for me. But then I look at it now, and I think it looks quite good, probably because we're in the dark. Then you've got that metal rid, uh, rear skid plate. Okay, I've just literally reset our trip. You can see 0, 0.0 miles. I've got 15 miles of EV range. Let's use all of that up. I'm putting it into EV mode now. As you can see, electric mode only. It's quietened up. I'm gonna literally burn all that 15 miles up and we'll see if that marries up with what our trip is saying. Let's talk about competition, plug-in hybrid competition. So you've got the Hyundai Tucson, which is pretty much the same car as the Sportage, same equipment. That one's 41,900 starting from. So it's a little bit more money than this, and depending on what styling you like is what you'll choose. Then you've got a good one, is the MG HS plug-in hybrid, which we tested and we liked. The suspension was pretty soft, it moved about a bit, but it did really well in terms of range and, and quality overall, and that's 31,000. So that's gonna be kind of cheapest, most affordable plug-in hybrid, but you might not want an MG badge. And then you've got the Renault Megane E-Tech. You're looking at around 37K for that. A car I haven't actually driven. And, and then another one that's quite interesting is the Ford Cougar. For huge following, people love Ford. 39,000 pounds. And that'll be another cool uh, plug-in hybrid you might like. However, the tech in the Kia Sportage is pretty cool. The look of the new Kia Sportage is pretty cool. So I think I'd probably go for the Sportage plug-in, but you'll have to let me know, guys. What would you have over this car? Let me know in the comments. Charging. The Kia Sportage plug-in's got a 13.8 kilowatt hour battery. If you have a 2.3 kilowatt wall plug, three pin plug at home, that's gonna take you five hours and 27 minutes from 10% to 100%. If you have a 7.3 kilowatt uh, wall box at home, lucky you. That's gonna take you one hour and 45 minutes from 10 to 100%. Okay, I think it's time for our first secret. Now this is very annoying. Lane keep assist. The bit where you don't indicate or you move across the line and it goes doo -doo 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 and constantly aggravates you, right? Now here, you see that lane keep assist is on and also lane follow assist is on, which is the steering wheel. Now this is super cool. Every time you start the vehicle, lane keep assist will always be on. If I press and hold the lane follow assist button, watch that disappear. I hold it one, two, three, and it's gone. Rather than having to go to the infotainment on every single car, turn off lane keep assist because it's so annoying, takes control of your wheel, shudders and says, meh, meh, meh. You can literally turn it on and off with the lane follow uh, assist button. Boot space is an interesting talking point because the plug-in hybrid has 540 litres of boot space. Because underneath here, you've got all the battery bits and gubbins. You've got this big polystyrene block and you can see under there. Now that's 40 litres less, less than the other Sportages. So if you do need a little bit of extra room, you'll just put those seats down and then you've got some more litres of boot space. But let me know what you think. Is that still enough? I think it is. So I want to talk to you about handling and suspension. I've just been in EV mode. It says I've got 11 miles left. Trip says we've done 5.5 miles. It's been pretty quiet. It's quite a windy day today. So there's a tiny bit of wind noise coming from that kind of direction. The steering is really light, super light. The car is very easy to get in and manoeuvre. Parking's a doddle as well with the cameras and because of its size. If you do want the steering a little bit sharper, you do have one mode up, which is the, the sport mode. And as soon as you put it into sport mode, did, did you feel that little jolt forward? The acceleration 
is a little bit more responsive. It's a lot more responsive, to be fair. And the steering wheel is stiffer, a little bit stiffer, a little bit more feedback through the wheel. Not, not tons, but definitely stiffer. And it handles really well. For what you need this car to do, it handles really well. You can have some fun in this car. And because you've got that battery element, electric motor, when you put your foot down, it, it does, it will shoot forward. And I love that. And there, there's that fun element. So let's put it back into eco a minute. And when you put it in sport, I love how it just goes red, like the color of anger, also passion, but also sport and dynamic. I like that. And there's an eco mode. Normally there's sometimes a normal mode, but you don't really need it. Then we've got terrain mode as well, which is cool. Cause ah, this is all wheel drive. All of the plugins, plug-in hybrids come as all wheel drive as standard because the other Kia Sportages aren't, unless you spec it. So you've got the terrain mode, snow, mud, and sand. Oh, look at the colors. Oh, they're all purple. So they're all purple, not different colors. And that's handy and that software will maximize your traction if you are thinking, oh, the road's a bit muddy, it's snowing. It does snow in the UK sometimes. And, and sand, probably not gonna use that one unless you drive uh, on Bright, I was gonna say, no, Brighton Beach is pebbles. And you drive on maybe Hunstanton in Norfolk. Yeah, there you go, that's sandy. So it's great you've got those options. The car, I've got to be honest with you, it's slightly on the firm side, but I don't mind that anyway, but it is comfortable. It is, it's not gonna be, uh, what's the word? Buy, buy all and end all, I think that's a, a saying. Basically, you're not gonna not buy the car because of the suspension. You're gonna, gonna say, yep, yeah, it's comfortable. And if I was trying to think back to the self-charging hybrid, because this is 200 kgs heavier, the differences would be, oh, it'd be minuscule. This still handles really well, just like that did. And now we like to talk about rear seat comfort. Now I've got Adam with me. He's been in the back of a Sportage before, but it wasn't a plug-in hybrid. So Adam, tell me what this one's like. So we're in the back of the, the Kia Sportage. It's actually quite a pleasant place to be. Let me show you, I've got plenty of headroom for my head, I think if you're, six foot or even just over you'll be absolutely fine knee room to show you here we've got quite a bit of knee room like actually more than i thought um you've got two usbs in the seats which are quite nice because they're sort of like at arm level so they're quite easy to get you've got some climate control in the back with you can actually change the temperature which is quite nice other than that there's not a lot going on in the back for your for your rear passengers you've got this which is quite cool little hook on the on the back seats the doors are very plain jane um the materials are okay um they're not the nicest to touch especially on the doors but actually the seat material is really nice and you've got this here which has two cup holders in um seat material you've got the suede and a bit of leather which is really nice to sort of feel and um, the bench is quite flat so could quite easily get maybe a middle passenger in as well um other than that two hooks there's not a lot else to talk about really um i'd say i'm pretty happy ride i can mention about ride and the quality of that i i would say it's a little bit on the firm side for me um i think in the back you can definitely feel the potholes and stuff etc i think there's definitely smoother suspensions out there. So yeah, that's my verdict anyway. Okay, it's time for your second secret. Now this is super handy. And if you've got it this far, made it this far to the video, thanks ever so much for watching. Maybe you'll consider subscribing. Okay, here it is. If I press and hold on the paper airplane, that's what I like to call it, you'll notice that the infotainment bar comes up and says, return to the selected display when the other display times out. So you can choose climate if you want it always to be on climate or you might want it always to be on infotainment again a great bit of customization there and a cool secret there's one thing i really want to talk to you about because it confused me straight away because i've i've driven other plug-in hybrids and this plug-in doesn't have a save option so we've got a number of modes we've got ev mode which is just using the battery and then we've got a hybrid mode, which prioritizes the engine, but does use a little bit of battery when it can. And then we have an automatic mode, which 
if you use that on a long journey, it would deplete your battery fully because it switches between, in automatic, it switches between hybrid and EV when it chooses to, when it sees fit. Now, when I've driven other plugins, the Range Rover has a save button, which springs to mind. Uh, the Audi Q3 had a really good option when you hit the EV and it had a save mode and it actually said, recharge it was an ev recharge which means it just used the engine it saved your battery charge but not only that it charged back now the kia sportage plug-in hybrid does charge back into your battery with regenerative braking and you can't customize it or anything but i've noticed when i've had it in just hybrid mode it will charge back a little bit but because there is no way of stopping the battery and saving that charge for later down the road it's a little bit of an oversight in my opinion and I think the hybrid mode is kind of confusing anyway because a hybrid is normally a bit of both but this is prioritizing the engine and uses the battery when it can. Anyway I want to know, I want to hear from Sportage owners, what do you do? How do you run your plug-in? What kind of range have you been getting? How I would work it is I would put it in hybrid mode if I wanted to try and charge as much back into the battery and then when I was in a, a town or village, I would just flip it over to EV and use the charge there. If I was doing a really long journey, then I'd maybe I'd try automatic to see how that would work. But I always think, I don't know, a human could, could make it a little bit more efficient. But let me know what you guys do down in the comments. Okay, I'm on an A road. I have one mile of EV range left. There we go. Now we started with 15 miles. Oh, it's just gone. It says zero. It says zero miles left on the EV battery. It said, well, although it says 15% energy information, so there's a little bit left in there, but this is the most interesting thing. Our trip said 15 miles. Our trip now says 13.6 miles. So if you get rid of the 0.6, basically that's, or keep the 0.6, 1.4 mile deficit to what it told me. Now, if we take that theory, and I've been doing a little bit. We haven't done anything too dramatic, no launches, no you know driving the car hard, just a little bit of B roading, a little bit of A roading. Uh, this is a 60 on this A road, and we're not even we're not even doing that. You know, we've been taking it really, really calm. If you took it at that, because we had 50% of battery, you could say that you would get 28 miles of range full battery or so 28 to 30 miles of range with a full battery of your 13.8 kilowatt hour battery but Kia say 43 miles so I think that's a little bit of a fair test we started at 15 miles of range it was 50 percent and we've done pretty much 14 and the EV range is at zero miles I would love to know guys if you have actually any owners of the plug-in hybrid Sportage what you've been getting with your range of battery charge. Let me know and we can have a chat about it in the comments. So we've just run the battery down to see what we would get in terms of range. And now it's kind of flashing up low battery maintaining hybrid mode error. And then it says battery management system error, details, battery management system malfunction, visit an authorized Kia dealer for inspection. Which isn't, which isn't great, which is a bit of a, a scary. Now, I don't know why it's done that. I don't know. Surely you should be able to just drive the car and deplete the electric range that you have left and then just flick over. But what I can't do now is I can't flick over to automatic or hybrid mode, or it, obviously you can't use EV mode because there's none left. But I think what it's doing now, it's hard pushing itself into hybrid mode to then try and maybe charge some of the vehicle back up because we've used it all. So we're gonna drive on a little bit more and see what happens and then and then update you. Okay, we're gonna put it into sport mode and we're gonna do a little bit of a launch. 7.9 seconds, they say that this plug-in hybrid can do. Let's go. Oh, okay, that picked up a little bit of some revs. Okay, and there you go, and that's 60. I'll put it into sport mode, I want to see the red. It's got a six speed gearbox as well with the plug-in hybrid. And that's pretty smooth, you don't really hear that, apart from when you uh, do a little bit of a launch in the car. Who does a launch in a family SUV? 
Car Chat TV do. But overall, the car is great. And I just wanted to mention that six-speed gearbox because when you are in eco mode and you're chilling, you're cruising, you don't hear the changes. And it is pretty smooth. It still says zero miles. But this is going up slowly. So but we've still got engine management light and uh, hybrid warning light. So it's not good. So that has been our episode on the Kia Sportage plug-in hybrid. I think we can say that we saw a great idea of what type of range we would get. Now we started with 15 miles. I'm not gonna go on about it too much, but I think it's very cold, it's wet. I think you're looking at with a Sportage around 28 to 30 miles of range with your 13.8 kilowatt hour battery. If you're getting any more, please let me know in the comments below. The car's really good, we love it here. Let us know what you think about the Kia Sportage plug-in hybrid down below in the comments. As always, throw me a like if you like the episode, get a sub to Car Chat TV, and I'll see you on the next one. If you've made it this far, thank you ever so much for watching. I've just popped up two more videos on your screen that you also may like. If you do watch one, let me know what you think.